A very warm welcome to the 2017 European Father and Son Golf Championship here on Sky Sports. This year's tournament is based in the beautiful region of Andalusia in southern Spain, where 56 teams have gathered to battle for the honour of calling themselves the European Father and Son Golf Champions. And this year the trophy is that little bit more special as the tournament celebrates its 10th anniversary. The championship began back in 2008 at Portaventura Golf Resort Salou and the inspiration was to create a competitive European based tournament for fathers and their sons to compete together in scratch and handicap competitions where they would not only have the pressures of a golf tournament but the added factor of playing with that someone special who means the world to you. Last year's tournament was a closely fought battle with the Scratch Championship going down to the wire. And it was this missed part on the 18th by Gareth Bradley that put the leaders into a three-way playoff between 2015 champions the Milliners, European Tour player Matthew Southgate and his father Ian, and the Bradleys who let a four-shot lead slip in the final round. In the playoff, the Bradleys found themselves out of contention and Matthew's experience became a major factor. And that putt would ultimately mean Gary Milliner had to make his to prevent the Southgates from taking the trophy. But he missed and it handed the victory to the Southgates and despite all of his success as a professional at the highest level, the honour and joy of winning this tournament with his dad was clear to see. And Matthew went on to have another incredible year on the European Tour, finishing runner-up at the Irish Open and sixth at the Open Championship, as well as many more top ten finishes. And it was this success that ensured him a spot in China at the World Golf Championships. So understandably the Southgates couldn't be here in Spain to defend their title this year. Who would make the most of their absence though? Coming up on this year's show from the European Father and Son Golf Championship, Three rounds of golf await our competitors. The first of those will be on the Almanara course. Then for round two, we move to the San Roque Club to play the new course, designed by Perry Dyer and the great man himself, Semi Ballesteros. Then the final round moves to the beautiful San Roque Old Course, where the players can expect a grandstand finish to their rounds. Teams automatically play in the scratch and handicap tournaments, but no one pair can win both trophies. So by the end of the final round, champions will be crowned in both categories. But it doesn't stop there. The teams not in contention on the final day for either trophy will be automatically placed in the Norman Taylor plate. So it's a busy week of golf action coming up. Before the main competition starts, the fathers and their sons competed in a charity day. We'll find out the overall winner of that day later and the teams break ranks into dads versus lads. We'll add up the scores from the day's action and see who comes out on top for a chance to have the bragging rights for the rest of the week. We've then got news coverage of the first two days of competition with some stunning golf action on offer. Plus, we'll have Spanish Ryder Cup legend Manuel Pinero and hear his take on this unique event. Then all that's left to do is crown our champions as family and friends gathered to witness the finale of this week's competition with final round action from the San Roque Old Course. This year's charity golf day was hosted at the Almanara Golf Club. A great chance for the players to get some practice in for the first round of the championship. The charity day at the European Father and Son has become an integral part of the event and the perfect start to a week of tournament golf. On the day, the individual winner was Adam Durband, who shot a fantastic score. Let's hear from the winner. I had a birdie on stroke two. I had three birdies over the day and just stayed steady with pause. And I think that's the main thing. I didn't lose many balls. So that's where my score came from, not losing balls. This year's Charity Golf Day was in aid of Leukemia Care, a charity close to the heart of the 2016 Scratch Champions, the Southgates. Over £2,000 was raised, and in the last 10 years, the tournament has raised over £25,000 for family charities. 
Charity Day winner Adam Durband was awarded his prize at the welcome reception and the results of the Lads v Dads challenge was announced where all Stableford scores are added up between the fathers and sons. The lads had won the last three years so the pressure was on the dads and it was finally time to put the competitors out of their misery. Ladies and gentlemen, this year's 2017 Lads versus Dads Championship oh. has gone to the dads! So there you have it, there may have only been a point in it, but the dads don't care, and at least they weren't rubbing it in. Well, not too much. And as the sun set on the charity day, the golfers turned their attention to the competition ahead. And it was here at Almanara Golf Club where we kicked off the championship with round one, a course set in the rolling hills of the iconic golfing area of Santa Grande. The competitors will play on a testing but beautiful 18 holes to get the 10th European Father and Son Golf Championship underway. We caught up with a few competitors before they headed out for their round, and one father and son in particular had some tough memories from last year's tournament. First of all, a bit disappointed to be in the playoff. Uh, you know, we'd been leading going into the last day, leading and going up the last hole, and uh, didn't make it. Uh, neither of us played particularly well in the, far, in the playoff, but. Uh, Love to say it didn't hurt, but it did. We're always going to be up against it as well. <laughs> Obviously playing against Matthew Southgate and previous winners as well. So if somebody said to me at the start of the week he'd be in a playoff with Matthew Southgate, I would have gone, yeah, bring it on. Um, but it's a different type of nervousness as well, isn't it, playing with your old man and desperate to impress. And it's, um, it's just one of those things. The fact is, I think we feel like we both should have won. And you know, we didn't. You know, whether they hold off on the green or not, we think we should have won it and it's very disappointing. But. You know, this year's another year. A couple of beers soften the blow, doesn't it? Yeah, and we'll go for it again this year. What's it like playing in a competitive tournament as father and son? For the fathers, it's incredibly stressful. <laughs> incredibly stressful. Before we came out, I had a little bit of a problem a few years ago with the yips. And uh, the first time they reared their head again was last year. And I said to, I said to Tom, it was because he put a little bit too much pressure on me. And uh, he just, I remember just the day before we came out, he said, Dad, I'll try and go easy on you this year. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's the hardest way to play golf with yourself because you, when you play for yourself, you can miss and you can uh, do some bad shots, but uh, here it's, uh, very, it's very tough because you have the pressure on yourself just to not let the team down. We, uh, we try to win the Swedish father and son, but uh, we come third. So, uh, yeah, this would be a good challenge for us, and uh, I really hope we win. <laughs> yeah, it would be mean, uh, one of the biggest tournaments to win in, in golf uh, career. For me personally, um, it's just to play with my old man. I don't get the experience to play too much. We've obviously like we've all got busy lives, and yeah, to play with him, it's, yeah, it's a good experience. Yeah, it's the same same thing to, to play with Luke. Uh, uh, we used to play loads when he was uh, little, but uh, now it's just to play together. And seeing uh, him progress both as a, as a man, but as a golfer, um, here at the Father and Son is, is probably what, what sticks with me the most. Watching him play, is, it gives me a lot of pride, because he's, he's a hell of a golfer, um, and he hits strikes the ball exceptionally well. So being able to walk with him and to watch him strike the ball is fantastic. Um, it was probably the best experience we've had in golf. Uh, we went the first time, just went there to have a bit of fun, spend a, a bit of time with my son, and then obviously to end up winning the net. It was the best experience ever. Unfortunately, we haven't reached those heights since, but we still keep coming back and hope we uh, do something this year. And what do you like about playing with your dad? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I love playing with him. He's, he's a solid golfer, so it helps me out really. If I can get a few birdies, he's always there with the par <laughs> double not yesterday <laughs> no no i love playing with him regardless if we do well or not it's still i still really enjoy playing with him so it's just a bonus if we do well oh we love the tournament it's fantastic we um, we really enjoy coming down together as father and son and we enjoy playing with lots of other father and son it's a really good atmosphere quite bonding week it's fantastic is it more pressure the fact that you're playing with your dad in the competition yeah it is because you don't really want to let him down i think it's much worse for dads I think all the dads I've spoken to are more worried about it than the sun's down. <laughs> What's your best memories from this tournament over the last few years? Um, definitely when 
we shot, I think it was 43 points on the first day. We had our name on the leaderboard for yeah, the third place. Yeah, we've actually, Mum has even taken a photograph of the TV screen with us on the leaderboard. <laughs> <laughs>On the course, Team Alford were going well in the handicap competition. Dad Andy sinking this long part on the par 4 8th, which would set them up with a respectable 40 points, along with six other teams. And one of those teams were their playing partners and fellow club members at Branston Golf and Country Club, the Baileys. Phil Bailey showing his delight here at getting some points on the board. Yes, Phil, we've seen it. Team Bailey oh, is the man. name. We won't forget. We've seen Luke Hines grow from boy to man in his time at the tournament, but it was his old man, Mick, that showed him the way on the seventh, dialing in their minds. And they would finish day one with 41 points. But it was the Danish pairing of Finn and Simon Stefansson that set the standard for day one calling upon their wealth of knowledge in this tournament with it being their ninth year as competitors. And son Simon was on point with his approach shots. And it could have been even better if a couple more putts like this had dropped. Hopefully they won't regret missed opportunities when we come to the end of this tournament. Confirmation then, only four points separate the top nine. So it's still wide open in the handicap trophy. But with a round that included eight net birdies, a net eagle and no blobs, Simon Stephenson off two and Dad Finn played some seriously good golf. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a great round. Uh, I came out like fire. I was four under through the first six holes and uh, I alone had 19 points after seven holes. I haven't tried that before, so uh, we, were, we were flying high at the moment, yeah. What would it mean if you managed to hold on for the next two days and, and win the tournament? <laughs> oh, that would be fun. We don't yeah. think about that. <laughs> no, no, we try not to think about it, but uh, obviously it would, it would mean a great deal. We've been here nine times, but um, as I said, it, it was never about winning. It was always about being together, you know, with your father working a lot and, yeah, having to spend a week with him, yeah. In the scratch trophy, it was the familiar faces of the Bradleys that finished seventh after round one. Father Gareth getting his yardages spot on. But it was not being able to convert these type of opportunities that stopped them finishing higher up the leaderboard, ending with 37 points for the round. Previous scratch champions, the Smiths, also finished on 37 points. Dad Joe showing some great touch around the green to save par. German-based English professional William Griffiths and his son Nicholas had a solid round of 38 points. Dad almost making this long part for birdie, but they still ended up fifth on the leaderboard and well in contention. The Mills are no strangers to success in this championship, having previously won the scratch and handicap trophies. They put themselves in a decent position, accumulating a total of 39 points. And Swedish team, the Falks, would join the Mills on 39, both father and son playing off two and producing some solid golf in round one. Anders Falk perhaps celebrating a little too early on this one though. How did that stay up? Rich and Richard Johnston, so good they named them twice. And here's Rich Jr. on target at the par 3 16th, dialing it in from 156 metres over the water. Not quite closest to the pin, but pretty good. Yeah, we see you, Rich. 39 points and second in the table for the Scottish pairing. But it was these guys that topped the table at the end of round one. The Milliners, scratch winners back in 2015 and last year's handicap champions. With seven birdies on the round, the German-based team was certainly in form and produced some quality golf. Confirmation then of the scratch trophy leaderboard after day one and with three previous scratch winners in the shape of the Smiths, the Mills and the Milliners, there was fierce competition for the trophy. 
Round two moves to the San Roque Club and the new course for another challenging day for the competitors. So that's it for round one, but we've got more great golf coming up. Find out after the break if the Milliners and the Stephensons can hold on to their top spots in round two, right here on Sky Sports. Welcome back to the European Father and Son Golf Championship here on Sky Sports. Rounds two and three of this championship are being played at the San Roque Club, a fitting venue for the tournament's 10th anniversary. Before we get to the action though, let's hear from Toby Marston, former professional golfer and founder of this very special event. It's just unbelievable. I, I can remember the first tournament, I remember the first day. It just seems like yesterday. I think the key moments stick out in my mind is, is the winners, always around the 18th, the drama of winning the championship is very emotional and I can remember every single 18th hole, I can remember every single winner, I can remember every champion. This is your family, this is blood, it, you know playing your own golf ball in golf is, is everything but it's something more when it's your family and it's your father or your son. It's all created by myself and my wife Jackie but it's, it's outgrown us, it's bigger than us. I can only see this growing and growing and growing, more families getting involved and franchising it and moving it across Europe. So I can just see this growing as an international event and uh, it, will, it will outgrow me for sure. We are just part of this, this wonderful uh, thing. And I feel very passionate about young people trying to follow in the footsteps that I tried and, and if I can give a little bit back with this tournament where some of these boys can learn to play in tournament conditions, the things that these boys are going to have to learn to contend with if they're ever going to go on to become successful players. But what's really exciting is the amount of young talent that we've had come through this tournament in 10 years and some of them have gone on to do great things in world golf. But of course we don't want to scare off handicapped golfers because this tournament is all about handicapped golfers. This is for ordinary golfers, that's the amazing thing, it is fathers and sons. It's not amateurs, it's not professionals, it's not scratch players, it's not high handicappers, it's fathers and sons. The San Roque Club uh, they started in 1992 with the old course and 20 years ago we got the Roger Cup and there came uh, many visitors to Valderrama and then the Sweet Hotel was the home of the team. After that we got the uh, Spanish Open and then we made the new course. It was designed with Paradise and Severiano Ballestero and the following years we got as well the Open of Spain so it was twice in this golf course. I think it's a very good chance and an opportunity for, for the destination because it's the first time that we have it here for the Nansom and now it's the 10th anniversary so it's a very good chance to know both golf course and the customer, the client can see that we have two different golf course in the same resort and so I think they will enjoy a lot. Round two and we're on the new course at the San Roque Club, a beautiful but testing track that'll sort the men from the boys. First up it's the Handicap Trophy and in this three-day tournament today is moving day. Unfortunately round one leaders the Stephensons were moving in the wrong direction. This part from Simon on 18 was for bogey and a round of 37 points. It dropped back to fifth position, but still in with a shout on the final day. Shane Livesey had his ball on a piece of string. Reel it in, boy. The 20-year-old from Monkstown Golf Club in Ireland was playing some fantastic golf. Any birdie part nerves? Not a chance. Look at the reaction. He must do it every time he plays. Phil Bailey doesn't do this every time he plays, though. Great celebration from the Branston Golf Club man, and they score a competitive 41 points, climbing to second place. In the sand, downhill towards the water, another man from Branston Golf Club. Andy Alford getting himself out of a pickle here. 
But it was all about 15-year-old son Tom Orford who had the round of his life, picking up eight of the team's 10 net birdies in the round, totaling a fantastic 46 points. They stormed to the top of the table, going into the final day of the championship. Confirmation then of the final positions at the end of round two. A good round from Keith and Adam Durban, fighting back from a disappointing first day to score 43 points. But it's all about the Orfords with that five-point lead. Can anyone catch them on the final day? In the scratch tournament, previous winners the Mills were keeping themselves in with a chance. And despite this putt horseshoeing out here at the par 3-8, they accumulated a respectable 38 points. Our favourite nearly men, the Bradleys, stayed competitive in round two. Here on the beautifully picturesque par 4 14th, Gareth Bradley taking extra care with those three footers. Putt for dough and all that. They finished the round with 39 points, which was good enough to put them in fourth on the table. And as Falk going cross country with this putt on the ninth, and getting it close for a tap-in par. Then watches on as son John goes pin hunting. It was 38 points for the Icemen. Back on the par three eighth and Nicholas Griffith was having to stay very patient with this putt. But his patience wasn't rewarded. Still, the Griffiths posting some competitive numbers with 39 points in round two. Topping the table though, it's the Milliners, 41 points in round one and another 41 points in round two. Gary on the 14th, tucking it in nice and close. With six birdies in the round, the Milliners stamping their authority on this championship and looking to make up for last year's playoff loss to the Southgates. Confirmation then of the standings after round two in the Scratch Championship. Can the Bradleys claw it back and vanquish those demons from 2016? They had a four-shot lead going into the final round last year. The Milliners have a five-shot lead this year. Surely it can't happen again, can it? stay at the San Roque Club for the final round but this time the teams take on the old course and the pressure begins to build as the players prepare for one of the most important rounds of their golfing careers and the chance to be crowned the kings of European father and son golf. We turn our attention to the first tee and our leaders going out last. The final group of the handicap competition is made up of two teams from the same club back in the UK, Branston Golf Club. It's the Alfords and the Baileys. A bit of sledging with the Alfords, take them out, and then uh, eat 44 points and take the cup. And what would it mean if you guys managed to win the handicap? Everything really, because I just recently moved to Spain to go to the University of Malaga, so I don't really see my dad very much anymore, so it's kind of nice to have a game every now and then. Yeah, we finished second last year, so we want to do one better. And do you think that experience of, of going close last year is going to help this year? Definitely, yeah. Yeah. Especially when we've got the inexperienced Alfords in our team, so <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll sort them out, don't worry. And here are those inexperienced Alfords, currently sitting on 86 points. Fantastic round yesterday, you're top of the leaderboard. Tell us all about it. Oh, we had a really, really good day. Most of it was down, most of it was down to Tom. Six, six birdies, I could come in with a couple, but uh, shot his best round ever. Three under, really proud of him. And what are your thoughts going into this final round today? Uh, we're just going to try and have a steady round, make sure we're just ahead of the Baileys. Uh, just enjoy it, really. In the scratch competition, it's the Griffiths that make it out in the final group on 77 points, the equivalent of five under par. Five shots off at the moment. Yeah. The Milliners are obviously fantastic golfers. Yeah. But Say they drop a couple of shots and you make a couple, does that change things, how you play? Um, I don't think so. I think you're trying to give your best out there all the time. I think it's, um, I don't think it changes anything at all. You want to, you want to try and play for your partner as good, as good as you can. So that's, that's the pressure you've got out there, I think. I've got two sons. My oldest son I played with two years ago. We were in exactly the same situation then. We were behind the milliners again. 
and um, quite a long way around and it was it, it, it ebbs and flows you get a little bit then they pull away and then it goes so it's, it's an exciting thing if we could turn it around it'd be a great thing yeah. and hats off to the talented milliners not making headgear but making birdies and plenty of them sitting five points clear on 82. it's, a, it's an old cliche but basically we have to play steady play hole for hole and um, we're looking forward to the challenge it's going to be good fun have you managed to play this course before I have played it a few times, yeah, it's, it's really tough. The greens are incredibly fast and slopey and uh, that's going to be the key to get a few pats in, I think. So, um, no, it's, it's fantastic here. Beautiful place. Coming up after the break, we hear from Ryder Cup legend Manuel Pinero. And we'll have all the thrills and spills from the final round of the European Father and Son Golf Championship right here on Sky Sports. Welcome back to the European Father and Son Golf Championship. This year the tournament is based in the area of Cadiz in Andalusia, an area rich in Spanish culture and incredible wildlife, but also a plethora of stunning golf courses. We caught up with Ryder Cup legend Manuel Pinero to tell us more. Golf has changed the whole area over the years. In the 60s, 70s, there was only people in the summer who were coming for, for good weather and, and the beaches. But uh, golf has changed all that. Since we have golf courses, now we have, actually the high season now is more in the winter than in the summer for, uh, for most of the hotels and the restaurants as well. I think we, especially here in Soto Grande, uh, we have probably the best courses in Spain. And uh, if you're a golfer, this is like the California of, of Europe. It is unique in golf because uh, with the handicaps and, and the different tees, that's why golf makes uh, such a wonderful sport. And uh, it's, it's lovely to see people from different age and uh, with the same, the same family and they can play, have fun and play. I have two daughters, my youngest daughter, she, she was a very good player. And sure if I play this tournament with my daughter, uh, I will have a lot of pressure and, and uh, I will be very nervous on the first tee, for sure. Well I was very proud, especially to be able to play with Seve. Uh, I think Seve was the magic man. He was the man who made European golf strong and uh, believe that we can be the Americans. And I was uh, very lucky to play with him those three days. And we only lost one match. It was a fantastic moment, not just for me, I think for European golf. I think after 85, the whole tour in Europe has changed. And also the attitude of uh, players. We, uh, we knew we have the talent to, to be the Americans. We have to prove it. Uh, we did that. In Europe, before that, we used to have some kind of uh, a complex against the Americans. And that 85 Ryder Cup changed everything. But uh, I was very fortunate to be Seve as my partner and uh, as also as my, my friend. Uh, I miss him so much, really. Time now to get to the final round action, starting with the Handicap Trophy. Your commentators are former professional golfer Toby Marsden and first of all, Phil Yates. Thanks, Simon. The Alfords were straight into action on hole one, a 367 metre par four. Now I thought you were only meant to get those kind of bounces if you remember. One ball on the green in regulation. Can Dad, Andy, follow suit? He does, which mean both have puts for birdie and more importantly, a net eagle. And he's first and what a start of the round this would be. In it goes, no sign of final round nerves for the new beast of the tournament. The Alfords in the zone, sending a message. Different story for the Baileys though, our son James had this put to save par. That's a killer blow, with a three shot swing after hole one, increasing the Alfords advantage to eight strokes. 
With Carol, their sports psychologist mother, walking the course, the Alfords recorded 23 points on the outward half. So who could possibly lay down a charge? Well, what about the Swedish pairing of Anders and John Falk? You have to say, they had an outside chance. Doing well in both competitions, with Anders playing some steady golf, and that gave his son John the license to grip it and rip it. But they ended the halfway stage with 17 points, so still with considerable work to do on the way back to the clubhouse. Also in the hunt, the Irish pairing of Niall and Shane Livesey. 19 points on the front nine, which included three net birdies, one of which came from this impressive tee shot on the par three third. Niall's tee shot was struck so sweetly, right next to the hole, almost running out for an ace. In the scratch competition, 2016 runners-up, the Bradleys, had a solid opening nine holes to their final round, securing 19 points. Charlie knocking in a lung birdie put on the eighth for three of them. But they'll need a lot more of that on the back nine to get anywhere near the leaders, the Milliners. With this being their fifth year at this tournament and having previously won both the scratch and the handicap trophies, they weren't only in pole position with nine to play, but also had vast experience on their side. They picked up two birdies and also an eagle on the ninth from Sun Justin, who was playing quality golf around the old course. Could this be the Anglo-German team's year yet again? They were certainly doing everything in their power to make it so. Let's take a quick look at the leaderboard. The Milliners in control. As for the Mills pairing, they have a four-shot deficit to try and erase. But Toby, they're making something of a charge. Yep, David Mills here. Uh, they've just birdied the 11th. They gained one on the Milliners on the front nine. And that's another one. So they've now closed the gap to three, making a charge. When they won the handicap competition in 2014, they won with a record low of 22 under. Tom Alford here with a birdie putt at 10. And that's very good for pace. Beautiful putt. And talking of beautiful, here are the American champions, the Sutherlands from a beautiful part of the world. Hilton Head Island in South Carolina. On the car registration plates there, it says, beautiful places, smiling faces. And after that, the Sutherlands have a beam, not a smile. We uh, played in the uh, our first, or actually our second father-son tournament this year um, in the States. And uh, actually we shot 14 under and one by one to be able to uh, play here in Spain, which has been unbelievable. Uh, these courses are a little bit more difficult for us, uh, a little bit more narrow, but uh, hopefully today we'll get a, a good round today. Well, they didn't quite play to their potential this week, but it was great to have the Americans here at this year's uh, championship. Yes, yeah, a truly international affair as the Irish. Their stock could have gone up with a birdie on 12, but putting towards the water, not a bad effort from the Livesies. So our first look at Gary Milliner here on the back nine. They're holding their lead, but the Mills are closing it down to three. This is a pro shot here at the par five, and that's very solid, setting himself up for a birdie putt. I'll tell you what, Toby, as the promoter of this tournament, you should be very proud of yourself because, again, you've picked an absolutely wonderful venue. Yeah, it is, Phil. It's a, it's a wonderful golf course. And that's a wonderful golf shot there from young Charlie Bradley. The standard in this event never fails to amaze the Milliners for birdie on 10. The hill, but, oh, the cardinal sin from Mr. Milliner Senior, leaving a birdie put short. Well, that's OK, that's another two points, another hole out of the way. Now we get to the Swedish pairing, the Falks, who are having their best performance ever in this tournament. And that's a wonderful shot. There's only about five yards to play with there, so a very brave shot straight over the water. Brave indeed, but the Alfords and Milliners are still going powerfully. They're both in the home straight, 
but can they keep their nerve? Find out after the break, right here on Sky Sports. Welcome back to the concluding final round action from the 2017 European Father and Son Championship. The Milliners are still going very well with only a few holes remaining. This Anglo-German pairing are leading the way in the Scratch Trophy, heading up the 15th, after the birdies dried up for the Mills pairing. In fact, the Milliners enjoy a four-shot lead. And it's a similar story in the Handicap Trophy. The Alfords are the newcomers to this tournament, but they haven't been phased by the competition. With just three holes left, they've built a healthy lead over the Lipsies. The Irish partnership now on the last. Also, our congratulations to the 2011 Scratch Champions, Joe and Ryan Smith, who've had a great day out on the old course, capturing the Norman Taylor Plate, scoring 37 points. That's the consolation competition for the lower half of the field. So back to the action, and Toby, after a wayward tee shot on the 16th, Charles Bradley is looking to recover. Yeah, Charles has just pulled his approach shot, and that's a very cute, clever little bump and run, and look at that, what a beautiful chip shot. Tap that in for his par, hopefully. Now the great Seve Ballesteros is associated with San Roque, and Gary Milliner needs something of the great man's escapology on 15, and it's duly produced. Take a look at this beautiful 18th hole, Phil. 415 yards, one of the best holes on the golf course, of which there are many here. It's a brook up the left-hand side. The players are going to have around about 160 yards for their finishing shots. Great hole. And the ideal amphitheatre with the crowds behind the green. Sadly, though, it's been an anticlimactic finish for the Mills. They were going great guns for two-thirds of the round, but a bogey on the last pretty much sums up the way they finished. Andy Alford here at the 16th of par three. And that's not bad, it's on the dance floor. Getting closer to victory all the time. As indeed are the Milliners in the Scratch Championship. Always low that put but they're getting to the point where they're nearly home and dry. So young Shane Livesey here at the 18th, planning his final shot. He's got a five iron, 180 yards. <laughs> oh, what a great golf shot. How about that? They played fantastic this week, the Irishman. No pain for Shane or indeed for the Alfords. 40 points on day one, 46 on day two, and very much on course for a 40 point plus total today. That yeah. put completely atypical of their performance so far, Toby. Yeah, very nervous putt that, but I don't know why, because I think if they realize how far in front they are, I relax a little bit more. Yes, the rest of them, the Bradleys included, playing for second place. And Gareth, 54 years of age, scratch handicapper, Missing an opportunity there. Yeah, it's probably, I mean, they're great ball strikers, these boys, but probably it's their putting that's uh, left them adrift. So let's see if young Shane can finish off in style. Uh, you could see he's just pulled that, but well done. What a great week for the Irish boys. It's not going to be enough, though. Yes, they've made the members at Monkstown Golf Club very proud. Now, the Milliners to 16. A very lengthy green, but quite narrow, Toby. Hey, look at that. When it's your day, it's your day. Thank you very much. Yes, yeah, not just a, a member's bounce, a, a winner's bounce. Andy playing his third shot into the par 5, 17th. And what a wonderful golf shot. Got that for birdie. 
Again, underlining the cosmopolitan nature of this event, the Falks into 18, quite a low ball flight. But I'll tell you what, very effective. That's a great shot, and he was a long way back there. I think he had about 220 yards with a three wood. What a lovely atmosphere behind the green. Oh, lovely shot. Great approach shot there from Gareth. Trying to extend their already substantial lead, the Milliners. That, though, was always low. Doesn't matter, though, because the par is already secured. So back to 17 with Andy Orford. He's got this for birdie. That's another nervy putt. Even when you're winning a golf tournament, any golfer will know the nerves never stop until you walk off that final green. And talking of the greens, they are rolling so smoothly. And you have to say the whole course has been set up magnificently. Yeah, it certainly has as a credit to Robert Bell and his green staff uh, who've set this golf course up to tournament conditions throughout the whole week and thank you to him. Justin Milliner, a striped drive down 17. Three iron from 220 yards. Now remember, he's already made an eagle in this round on the ninth. Far right hand pin over the bunker. What a cracker, Toby. Ah, it's just an awesome goal shot. It was all over it from that distance. High standard second shot into 18 from Mr. Bradley. But not the put to match. No grandstand finish. No, they've done fantastically well, but it looks like it's going to be a second year of runners-up. But maybe their year will come, third time lucky. So well done to the Bradleys. Great guys and great golfers. And the Falks as well. Another great week for those guys. So here we go, the final hole. Our handicap champions, the Alfords. Well done, it's on the dance floor. I bet that's a huge relief to him. And I'm hugely impressed with these guys, Phil, to take the pressure for their first time to the tournament is really impressive. Absolutely. And the same applies to the Milliners. Now, if this puts converted, what a story to tell. It really is a double eagle. A three on nine, and now a three on 17. Justin, take a bow. Magnificent, absolutely magnificent. These guys are good, I tell you. How good was that? <laughs> OK, back to the 18th green. So let's see if Tom can finish in style. Wouldn't that be nice if he could hold this? Yes, he's the Staffordshire under 16 champion, but I think that's the greatest moment of his golfing life so far. Didn't get much sleep last night, uh, but we just we just tried to focus on each shot uh, and and keep it going, play one one shot at a time. It was a, it's a dream come true to, to to win it with my son. Really proud, really proud of how he played. We both played really good golf, Fun, had a fantastic time. Confirmation then of the handicap standings. The Alfords finishing on 127 points, 19 under to claim the trophy. So back to the 18th here, Justin Milliner. Seven iron. Looks like he's pushed this and there's water. Oh, just holding up. <laughs> Be still my beating heart. 
Now three on 17, what about a three on 18, Toby? Would be nice, wouldn't it? Oh! That is a shot, a moment he will never forget. How about that? Fantastic. Well, I think everyone really assumes that it's uh, a five-shot lead is a, is a done thing, but we all know in golf anything can happen, so um, we, we actually got away to a good start, I birdied the first, but the finish, the finish, what he, what he made was just unbelievable. Two unbelievable shots on 17 and an eagle putt, and the jip in at the 18th, I mean, that was just fantastic. What an incredible finish to the round. Eagle birdie, and here's the confirmation of those final scores. And it wasn't even close in the end. Three solid rounds of 41 points mean the Milliners take the scratch trophy. Antonio Arias from the Cadiz Tourist Board presents the handicap trophy to the Orfords. And the Milliners are presented with the scratch trophy by San Roque club captain, David Campbell. And that's it for this year's European Father and Son Golf Championship. Congratulations to the Alfords and the Milliners. We'll see you all again next year. For more information, go to europeanfatherandsongolf.co.uk.